this was amazing. I saw it the other day and I thought to myself, this is what I'm talking about because I originally saw Drew, a follow, make a video in which she said, you know, her and her man had taken many years to get engaged and a lot of people were doubting that and kind of questioning it. And I think Drew's a really good example of a girl who's like making her own bubble, doing her own thing, you know, vibing with her partner. And I really do trust Drew to make those decisions for herself. So she took like seven years to get engaged, which, you know, might be a red flag for some people, but I think if it's done for the right reason, then I think that's kind of the point, right? And so Drew made a video where she said something in her video that stood out to me. And it, she said something like, you know, we've had hard times, we've had our ups and downs. And initially I was like, oh no, is Drew saying that her relationship has been hard because her partner and her have been toxic together? And then I saw her make a follow-up video because somebody else talked about that. And she said what I was hoping she would say, which is what I say about relationships, which is why I'm still very confident that she's in a great relationship. She said, it's not the relationship that was hard. It was life that was hard. So let's check that out because this is everything. I think this is so good. The comment says, what did you guys work on, discuss, try to experience relationship-wise before engagement, if that's okay to ask? Hey, I've been getting a lot of questions like this, so I'm gonna do my best to answer it in the best way I know how. In my personal opinion, the only thing you genuinely need to discuss is whether or not either of you want to get married and your wants and desires should absolutely 100% be aligned. So for example, if you know eventually you're going to want to get married and he doesn't, you're not going to be able to change his mind. Especially if he tells you upfront, I don't ever want to get married. I truly believe there are some people who do not ever want to get married and there's nothing wrong with that. But I do think you should be with someone who is aligned with your goals. So when we first started mm. dating, we both knew within the first month that we wanted to marry each other. And then we talked about whether or not marriage was even on the table. We were aligned, we're gonna do it. That's the only conversation you need to have. When it happens is specifically up to you. Mm. As a couple, that is not a choice that only the man gets to make. Mm. As far as trying to experience things, when I talked about going through hardship with your partner, I'm not talking about being put through hardship by your partner those are two very different mm -hmm. things i'm talking about life happening so for example your date pause yes this is why i know drew's in a healthy relationship i mean i already thought it before but this is why i know she's in a healthy relationship because this is the key to me your partner shouldn't put you through hardship can you imagine the love of your life being like mm, how do i fuck up the love of my life's day to day no now and I want to say this to for all my chronically ill girlies, my neurodivergent girlies, you being sick, you being disabled is not you ruining your partner's day. It is not you thinking of ways to up your partner's day. That is simply you. And they married you and they're dating you and they're living with you and they have a relationship with you. And so they have chosen you, the consciousness. And that comes with life, life hardships. Health is a life hardship. It is not you making your partner's life hard. That is life itself causing a hardness in life that is more than doable, okay? So again, like my fibromyalgia, my neurodivergence, my partner's neurodivergence, our relationship with our bodies, these are not things we are doing on purpose to punish each other. They are things that life have given us and we are doing our best with them. And together, because we are trying to alleviate each other's pain, looks at each other when we are in chronic pain and we say, how can I make your day better? How can we make these things better? Do you need time alone? Do you need more of my time? Do you need me to make you food today? What do you need? And then we, you know, we, we work together as a team, together as a team, team, team. Okay. So again, when I see this and I see Drew say this, like your partner should make your life harder. They should not be the hardship. This is very important. This doesn't mean your partner won't be sick. They won't have financial insecurity. They won't have moments of doubt. It doesn't mean that their family members aren't going to get sick or someone's not going to have something happen. It means they're not going to do it on purpose. They're not going to literally look at you and think, I'm going to make a bad decision, even though I know it hurts everybody and I'm going to do it and never take responsibility for it. Chat says, I don't know a single person in real life who thinks life is hard, relationships should be, but almost all of them think you have to stay together no matter what makes, uh, make it work. I think, I think there's a lot of people, um, and I think I dated a lot of those people, if I'm going to be honest, or at least socialized with a lot of those people who kept thinking like, you know, this is normal. All relationships are this hard. And I was like, no, no. I got my Spotify hours back from Spotify so now I can listen to more audiobooks because I use them all up and now I'm back and I can I can listen again and I'm finishing up Julia Fox's memoir. 
She's the epitome of toxicity, relationships. This is like her, she's 19 in the story right now. This is the epitome of that bubble. The bubble that's like, this is life. And this is like what love is. Love is hard, Julia. And I'm like, <gasps> and like, she's kind of falling for it in the book. And I don't know where she ends up, obviously, because she's an adult now. But um, it is like, it is a lot of that. Like, it's a lot. There's a very toxic bubble that just thinks like, you have to put up with my bullshit. Because you love me. If this is like love that is healthy, then we should be open with boundaries. So here's Drew giving examples. You're dating someone for a couple years and then you lose your job. You're dating someone for a couple years and then one of your family members dies. You're dating someone for a couple years and one of you has to move across the country. Someone's grandparents get sick. Someone's family members need money. How do you and your partner react in those situations is my point. When I'm talking about hardship, I'm talking about life. Mm. Mm. talking about living life alongside each other because life is fucking hard so when i'm detailing my man and i going through life together and building a foundation we experienced all kinds of things good and bad alongside each other and could count on each other to fucking be there that's what the fuck i'm talking about when mm -hmm. i say i wasn't in a rush neither was he because that's my man bitch you feel me <laughs> like, the question was never whether or not he wanted to marry me because i knew the answer to that hoe <laughs> the question is is this the right person to do life with and health and yeah it is so if some people know and get married in two years and some people wait 25 years it doesn't matter to me because it's whatever works best for you and your partner this fallacy that you have to rush and hurry up and get married especially mm. as women or femme is nothing more than a tool of the patriarchy it's meant to clip your wings bitch so that you're forced to settle and i'm here to tell you you don't have to settle if you don't want to in fact i refuse to and now look sounds like it worked out pretty well for me didn't it <laughs> anyways i hope that answers your question that's it love you bye exactly i know i sound crazy because i got married in a year I met this person I knew right away. We went through a lot together to get to this point. Life hit us so quick. We had family members go through stuff. I was going through a health crisis. We were doing immigration. Like so much of life came at us so hard and we did everything just in as such a team, a good team, okay? I refused to settle and when I used to settle, I could feel it. It was wrong. It wasn't a part of my alignment. So again, like with peace and love, do what's good for you and your relationship. My brother got engaged in three months and married in six, okay? I got him engaged officially in six months, married in, in 12. Everybody's got a different plan. Everyone's doing things that are different. For them, it was together, month in, knew they were gonna get married, seven years to get engaged. Beautiful. I don't care what it is as long as you both are aware of what it is and you're on the same page. The worry you see is women who are like, I've been dating him <clears throat> for seven years and I don't know if we're getting married. That's crazy. Like, or I've been with them and I don't know if they're going to stick around. It's like, girl, that is settling. Be on the same page as your partner. And it doesn't matter how quick or how long it takes you to kind of get ready. I think Drew said something really profound. And I don't want to um, assume this is exactly what she meant. But what I heard from her message was that even though they wanted to get married, they still had to make sure this was the person to get married to. And I think that's what the courting process did for my partner and I is we were, we wanted to get married, but we also wanted to make sure we were the right people to marry each other. So I, again, I don't want to speak for Drew, but that's the message I took from that sentence, which is like, yes, you want to do a lot of things, but you got to make sure it's also the right person. And so through that courting process, we proved to one another, like, this is the right person. I want to do life with this person, even though, and he'll tell you, oh, I knew I wanted to marry you within like a week. And I was like, stop, like, stop. Okay. But the truth is, is like within like maybe a couple weeks, I was like, oh shit, I love this consciousness. Like this person's gonna be very special in my life. Even if I don't know what that is as a friend or a lover, like I couldn't tell, but I was like, oh, I think I'm gonna love this human like very deeply and profoundly. And I didn't, you know, I wasn't as sure as he was. You know, I wasn't like, I'm gonna marry this person. I was like, oh, something's going on with this one. I don't know what it is though, you know? So Again, I think that's such a beautiful and a, a showmanship. Like it's a, it's a proof of kind of a maturity, a discernment is to say, even though I want, I want to make sure more, you know? And so I think this is really beautiful and shout out to Drew and her, congratulations to her and her man and her engagement. Like what a beautiful thing to see, but they were already a beautiful couple to begin with, which I think is the most important thing. Healthy relationships do healthy things. 
And that's what I mean to say when the audacity of some of these creators, some of these haters coming into Drew's life to say like, oh, her relationship sucks. Look how long he was looking for an exit. All these negative things when all these people, especially the people that are criticizing are single or miserably divorced because their partner felt like they had to leave the marriage to get away from them. So I don't even want to be lectured from people again who are in unhealthy situations, like the audacity of people in unhealthy relationships to try to lecture people in healthy ones. Like, please sit down, sit down. I'm not saying you have to be coupled to give relationship advice, okay? Some of the best relationship advice has come from single people, but healthy single people, not miserable, lonely, bitter single people like Pearl. Yes, chat, literally Pearl, okay? I don't want no advice from Pearl. She's miserable. I want advice from people that are joyful in their life, people that are happy, right? In the same way you can get good parenting advice from someone who doesn't have a kid because Again, it's their relationship and knowledge to that child. My brother and my sister-in-law used to come to me for advice about parenting all the time because I worked in childcare as a profession and because I'm an older sister and because I've worked with babies and because I've read up on babies. And so they asked me for advice. I don't have kids, but I walk the walk in terms of learning about children enough to give something. And then when I didn't know, I would advise them to like go read somebody. So a single person who's never been married can have some wisdom, but they've got to be healthy and they've got to know what they're talking about. And a lot of people who are miserable, look at Myron, look at Myron Gaines giving relationship advice. A man who says he hates sleeping with women. He literally hates having sex with them. You know, it sounds like a good idea sometimes to hire men or be friends with men who are willing to be sexual with each other just so you can get off so you don't have to deal with women. You know, maybe no relationship advice from Myron. Maybe no relationship advice from Pearl. Maybe like no relationship, but okay, okay, ma'am. Great video. Shout out to Drew. We love to see healthy relationships because they are so lacking in a world that is so about settling tomorrow. Girls, get ready. Put on, oh, girls, we are going to catch up with an old, I've made a video about somebody on YouTube like a while ago and people were very mad at me, like the fans and even viewers of my own audience that were like, oh, like you don't like this person and like, you da, 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 da. and I only found out about their videos because someone suggested it. We're going to go back and visit their videos tomorrow because now their audience is finally seeing the same criticism I was throwing at them, the same complaints I had when I first watched their videos a couple of years ago or whatever it was. I was like, mm, I don't know about this couple. Now the whole audience, almost every single comment on the video is like, <gasps> and I was like, I told you, bitch. I told you. I'm so sick of seeing people that settle in relationships, but I know for a fact it happens because the world, like Drew said, encourages you to do it ironically for the patriarchy and it's an age gap relationship y'all Ooh, you all it's so good i'll cover it tomorrow i don't like to see relationships crumble but i love to see a girl leave a relationship where she settled and i love to see a boy leave a relationship where he settled i love to see a they leave a relationship where they settled because listen you don't always get the chance to leave and sometimes you can go from settling to making it a good relationship but let me tell you let me tell you the sadness in a person's face when they know they've settled. The sadness in a person's demeanor when they know they've settled. I love to see joy on a girl's face. I love to see joy on a boy's face. I just love to see joy on a person's face. That's what I wanna see. I wanna see people happy. And I'm so glad to see Drew happy. Can't wait to read her book. I'm sure it's fabulous. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Thank you.